Obi Radio is back. And then we had Lewis Black in here yesterday, and he told some fucked up story. He said that, that he mentioned it in his book, but he rarely talks about it. But he was married at uh, 26 years old. Right. Had a kid with a woman. Okay. Did you guys ever hear this? The mm-hmm. kid? Mm-hmm. Oh, you've heard the mm-hmm. kid. Oh, you're smiling mm-hmm. over there. Are you going to do a spin And I'm take? drinking water. Go ahead. No, no, okay. No, go ahead. And then three or four months into it, uh, they realize, or he realizes it's not his right. kid. Did he do the Maury dance? <laughs> well, <laughs> the Maury show dance. See? He was 26 years old. Louis Black is definitely not black if he didn't do the Maury dance, finding out the baby was not his. Do the moonwalker, crip walker, something, motherfucker. Crip walking. The worm. They did worm your ass off stage. <laughs> they did some old school blood test back in the day. Yeah. Yeah, they this is about out. 40 years ago, maybe a little uh, wow. even more than that. And uh, I asked him the question, though, man, uh, you know, when that kid is put in your arms as yours, I don't know how you get past that, even if you find out biologically it's not yours four months later. Well, four months, maybe you can do it. Maybe he might have had his own questions, too. I'm as not a young questioning person. him, by the way. I'm, I was I was confused because I was, I was putting myself in that position. Like, man, what would I do? I'm, I, t- I will test everybody. You'll just test everybody. I, guess, I don't you? care if you're my wife for 40 years. You get a blood <laughs> test, <laughs> baby, come out of here. I don't give a fuck. I, don't, I ain't with you every day. <laughs> he has a child, by yes. the way. Yes, he oh, does. The test. Speaking of some and I officially who- had the child, boy, once the baby was born, I was like, oh, I love the baby. Love, right. Hey, mwah. <laughs> mwah. Let's go down and test this fucking baby. <laughs> no, that's true. Does the baby look at look it like Just you? like me, yes. Uh, it's no, great. Yeah, so you, exactly. you just know. But still, In blooded. Louis Black's case, which was really funny, and the whole story, that's also up on the YouTube channel. We'll uh, we'll tweet it out again. I think we've tweeted out a lot in the last uh, 12 hours. But anyway, uh, his father went to Lewis and said, the ears aren't right. Ah, oh, his father. That Sam. was the first sign. His father goes, man, those ears aren't right. We got family ears. ears. I know our ears. So yes, that's the thing. Ears and ears. nose, you can tell. Yes. Come on. Yes. Ears? That's particular things that get passed down from generation. You got your grandfather's ears. And he, his father probably saw something in it. was like, dang, yo fucking kid. He's, he's like, ah, the ears aren't right, Your Lewis. parents always yeah. know. Your Sam, parents. And Sam's one of those. Uh, Jeanette is his mom's name. And she talks more than Sam. She's doing most of the talking. But Sam's one of those guys that when Sam talks, you listen. Yeah. He's, 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 he's the quiet guy. But when he says something, it's always good. Yeah. So I can I can see that resonating. Fucking, I can see him saying it now. Totally. I, I, you and, know. I, and I learned during the break because I was talking to Vic Hanley about Lewis. Uh, I didn't know you knew Lewis Black's parents pretty well, and that, they're still alive and they're well into their nineties. Yes, when we when we did the comedy cruises in 2010 and 2011, they both were on the ship with us the really? whole the entire time. Wow. And they're and they're, and they're in their nineties, you know, and uh, or late eighties at the time, and uh, and they their their caregivers at the time were these two. Retired, or still are these two retired nurses who were in their seventies. <laughs> so, so you got the four of them on the ship the entire. And his mother, oh god, he's and his mother's hilarious, and she's just ruthlessly mean and sarcastic. And right. uh, they've recently had to hire. I was telling you off the show, they uh, they've got somebody now that has to come in because they're worried she was forgetting stuff, and Sam has to have medication. And so they they've got a nurse now that comes in along with the seventy year old nurses. Yeah. Oh. They got a real one now to come in to make sure things don't get messed up with medicine and stuff. Keep Eye on the nurses and too. for the first two, three days, Jeanette, uh, Lou finally had to call his mother and go, quit calling the lady a moron. <laughs> Every time she would enter the room, she would look at Sam and go, the moron's back. And just wow. kept saying it. So Lou had to finally go, look, mom, you agreed to do this. You know you need some help. So let's have a more positive environment and quit calling the lady for the, uh, uh, a moron. She's a, moron. Wow. she's a registered nurse. <laughs> she's got a master's degree. Everything's fine. Fun, but I, I wish I'd talked to Lewis about his parents. God, they're funny. Having they're so your parents alive well in their 90s. 90s you know, yeah. Nuts. And, I, they're, and they're with it, right? Oh, they're totally fr- wonderful. They're, they are just, I mean, he took, I've got a picture. I'll have to find it. It's not on my phone. I've got a, we stopped in Mexico and uh, and Sam bought one of those Luchadero, one of those Mexican wrestling masks. Yeah. And I've got a picture where he's wearing the wrestling mask and my arms around him. And nice. It's, so, and, and all you know, it's just an old dude. You don't know who it is, but all my friends are like, who's the fuck? And I, I love that picture and I'm like that's uh, <laughs> Sam that's Lewis Black's dad they're, wow. they're 98 we just looked up yeah. their 98? 98 yeah 98 still doing it yeah, they're wow. fine. I God remember my, my grandma, she's long gone but she made it into her 90s and I remember at 80 she was like I want to go back to work and we're like, sure. what? At 80? And she was completely with it, so it wasn't one of these things right. where she was yeah, hallucinating. Seen it. Oh, wow. They look good, That's man. on the cruise. That's from, I think that, 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 might be from, ago, that might huh? be from the, you know, and, there they are. And I remember my grandma going, yeah, I want to go back to work and help old people. And we're looking at my, my grandma. I'm like, right. you're 80. Yeah. 
But she never felt like she was old. Right. And it's she's all like, I want to go back to work and help out old people. I had a story in my show. Amazing. I have a story. I have a joke story. Anyway, it, it's got this, it's got the C word in it, you know, and yeah. it, it hinges on a lot of that. And, uh, they had rolled her wheelchair down by the stage the night I was, cl- everybody had to close on the cruise. You had, to, everybody had to do one long set. Right. Then the rest of the week, you're dicking around, do whatever. And so I told, I closed with this story and I walk off stage and she waves me over and said, that's the funniest fucking thing. I love that. That's my favorite nice. thing you did. <laughs> and because she's such a hard ass, by the time I got to the back of the room, Lewis is running over me going, what did my mother just say? Because <laughs> so, he saw me smiling and he knew it was nice. Right. And she never says anything nice. And I'm like, she loved the cunt joke. <laughs> <laughs> and so he's like, God damn it. He's like, she, he was so mad that she made me a compliment. <laughs> he's like, she hadn't said anything great. nice to me in fucking 15 years. And she, wow. she likes the cunt joke. And I'm like, yeah, she apparently. That's wonderful. You know, yeah. God, we They're great people. Her. They are lovely human and, beings. And yeah. Lewis, too. I mean, we all love Lewis Blanc. Oh, no question. Yeah, man. I, oh. It was really good to see him yesterday. It's been maybe a year or two at this point. Uh, you know the first class story with Trump? We got a guy that uh, has something on Oh, that. yes. And then I want to know the, the, the story you were going to tell oh, me. I'll Madigan tell you. It's one of Madigan's favorite Lewis Black stories. All right. Let's go to uh, Rick in Pennsylvania. Go ahead, Rick. Hey, what's up, Hope? Hey, buddy. Hey, uh, I was just looking online at this Trump story. The latest headline is from Yahoo News, and it says the national spokesman for his campaign has come out and said that there's no possible way that the airplane thing could have happened because the seats had fixed armrests in first class during the 80s. Oh, it's that Katrina Pearson. She's she's nuts. Katrina Pearson is nuts. She's going to my church. Wait, you know her? No, I don't know. Oh, okay, okay. (laughs) Oh, yes, it's the Pearson. So she's basically (laughs) saying it couldn't happen because the armrest is solid in first class and will not move. I actually do know her from Fox News, but I don't fucking. But yeah, that don't make you can't reach over the armrest. You can do some things around that armrest. Anybody who ever finger blasted in their life, that's 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 an obstacle you can get over. Oh, my God. When you you were in high school, you realized, man, you're your hand can move in some crazy ass directions yeah. when yeah. it has to. If you need it to. <laughs> right, when it has to. <laughs> I didn't know I was double doing it. <laughs> Holy uh, fuck. Yeah. I don't even recognize my own hand anymore. I have to ease into it. I don't like moist fingers. Yeah. <laughs> I had to grow into like really? a moist finger. Yeah, I wasn't uh, into that. I'm a Leo. We don't like, like a cat don't like seriously? wet paws. Is that what it is? I think so. so Wait, you didn't like. Uh, I had to grow into, yeah. You had to like it. I would you had to learn and, to and, like Yeah, it, I had to learn. You didn't yeah. like. Because I would go in and be like this, look at this mess. And then I have to wipe it off. Uh, really? You got your mess on my mess, you filthy girl. That's hilarious. Wow. <laughs> You're the first person I've ever met that was ever grossed out by the finger. The same brain. thing with food. With food, you know? it's like my hands get too sticky. I gotta go wipe my hands. Right. I can't. I understand it with food, but I mean, come on. I, I used to be I like that with puss. I used to be like really? that. Really? Yeah. I don't understand either example. Really? Neither but that one. You don't mind having messy me, hands? Fuck no. Hell no. When I mean, some good's going on. You when, when it, but now I grew into it. Now I, it can be all over my face. <laughs> your head. Slow roasted. Yeah. I'm, I'm seeing it in your eyebrows. <laughs> a slow roasted chicken will drive me, oh, it'll drive me no, nuts it how greasy me. my hands get. Then no. it's like the rotisserie sticky fucking. Rotisserie chickens. I, I will, no, yeah, I I like will be cleaning my no. hands throughout the whole thing. It's like fed, napalm. Man. It's like fucking napalm on you. I, I hate that. I can't yeah, tell it. Love it. Love uh, Rick, thanks for that. But yeah, she's Katrina Pierce. Yeah, no problem. Uh, she has said some, uh, some things during this election. There. Even Amarosa so looks at her like, bitch, what are you talking about? <laughs> I love watching the sur- – what do they call the surrogates? I love I love watching the surrogates for both campaigns on TV. Yeah. They're wonderful. <laughs> the, the, did you see the Scotty Hughes? No. She's one of them. Oh, which one is Scotty She's Hughes? the blonde that has the fucking devil eyes. She, I, I haven't seen her as much lately, man. This is one – You've and seen it. right there? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. No, that she one. gets yeah, it going, man, when they get her on uh, on, on uh, the news programs. Look at that. She looks crazy. Yeah, she Scotty Nell Hughes. Uh, Uh-oh. She looks determined. I oh, give her that. Shit. She definitely looks oh, determined. Go. This is uh, Dennis in the house. I guess, I guess you were thinking that we were having too too much fun today. <laughs> you needed to fucking bring it down a notch. Oh, uh, uh, Fuck. <laughs> What's up, Dennis Falcone? You know, many yeah, years I love ago. doing afternoons where you can now just walk in. <laughs> man, good, man. He used like to come in early so he can do it in the fan, morning. But he, he had a plan ahead of time. Now he just walks down the hall whenever he wants. Uh, what do you got, Dennis? You know, in 1988, I was at uh, Trump Plaza. 
Okay. You ran in New York City? Yeah, we were at a did black he, uh, tie uh, Did he put, you, put his tongue down your throat? No. And uh, I was there for a black uh, black tie function. It's called an African tie fr- African American tie fr- <laughs> And he came in <laughs> with his then wife, Ivana. <laughs> but back on that night in 1988, the Mets were involved in the playoff series with uh, the Dodgers. And uh, my wife was kind of mad because I spent most of the night in the kitchen with the staff watching the game. Nice. And... That there was, was a point to this story. That's, That's your story? story? Oh, my really? God. What? what are you doing? Well, you, We're fighting for our lives here. <laughs> well, you would steal something or somebody got shot or pushed <laughs> down a flight of stairs. What the fuck are you doing? You saw Trump finger somebody? I thought it was going to end with that. No. Gonna, I'm going to be back at BAB if you continue with this <laughs> shit. You'll be working at an AM day timer. That's so your you watched, story? You came in and interrupted us for that? And oh, watched the were, Mets lose in the kitchen right. with the staff. Yeah. I'm going yeah. to send D.C. Benny a text now because oh he's got a, he actually has a good Trump story. <laughs> so yeah. I'm going to try to get Does a hold he? of Yeah, he's got it's, it's, it's a quick one, but I'm going to yeah. send I'll try to get him to call in with his Trump I, story. I, I don't think it, we've ever had D.C. on DC's the show. DC's well, one yeah, of the DC's funniest great. comics. Yeah, he's yeah, amazing. Oh, and yeah. Great storyteller. Yes. Fabulous storyteller. Are you going to do the the Kathy Manigan, Lewis Black story? I was waiting. Are you done, Dennis? He has more. You got his job. Journal, let him, let Dennis We've get all shit. done that shit. You're at a wedding and your team's playing, and you'd sneak off to a, you know, yeah, but that was before, a quarter or something. That was before iPhones and everything, you know. So. so you couldn't do that. So I actually had to be in the kitchen uh, with the staff. <laughs> Poor thing. And I'd bring them back beers, and they go, "No, no, we can't drink. We're working." I said, "Don't worry, you're with Dennis Falcone. You have a cold one." <laughs> how, many, how, how many beers did your mom yeah. have when she was pregnant that you got that tiny head? <laughs> So what? He got a Zika skull. So what? He's <laughs> sticking up for this fuck. Free Zika. This is a great Free time Zika. of year. You know what kind of show we've had so far? <laughs> well, although, although I like this, his energy. This is a great time of year. Why? Baseball, hockey, yep. football. Hot, well, yep. Next week. That's yeah, last night's hockey. Islanders hard tonight, right? Islanders Rangers. Right, but right, but right. last night, a uh, great rookie for Toronto. I forget his name. L- look him up. His first three shots, goals. He really? scored four goals last night. Really? And nice. Toronto's still lost. I, I'm not ready for hockey. Is he Canadian? I, I'm excited game? that it starts up American. tonight. American. Really? Yeah. Hey, Islanders Rangers, right? Tonight? Yes, at the Fuck, Garden. I, I shouldn't be going to that. Which is kind of kind of stupid because... Who am I kidding? I won't be able to get to my seat with this back. <laughs> no, you can't go in there. You have to lay on the ice just so you're back in. <laughs> just, just walking up the sidewalk today, I was scared shitless. That someone's going to bump into me. That's how bad it is. But you have an opening wow. night just like this. <laughs> you saw. I did see. You I was saw. shocked. I was shocked. What, what happened to your back? He can't oh, even walk. Well, yeah, do you pay attention to anything? I was in and out. crippling. Yeah. Do you yeah. have some Christ. Aleve? Aleve is the best. You might need x-rays. Like You might have to go in no, somewhere. I've, I've been through this so many times. But I, I do got to go uh, and just get to see how everything's progressing because right. eventually I think I got I'm going to have to have that some kind of operation. Like what do you 3 have days a... later you walking that slow and fucking Dude, it tender? used to be 2 to 3 weeks. <sighs> well, you have a slip disc? I don't fucking know. My mother know. had a slip disc years used, ago. There right. used to be a record store that I used to go to called Slip Disc. Was it really? Back in the 80s, they used to sell all the new wave records. <laughs> right. And the... Uh, Could you hurry up and get DC Benny on the phone? And, phone? and, <laughs> and the other DJs would Can drop you please off text uh, faster than that, the records that they didn't want from the disco pool. Okay. Right. And I used to get all the 12-inch stuff. I'll never forget. I have an... Why are you making of believe Rick you're James, interested in this, Rod? If Rick I James am, I love this. Oh, you son of a bitch. As you got Rick James Super Freak, you say, Yeah, Dennis? on an import 12 inch. Yeah. That import 12 inch. Freak. How much yeah. you pay for it back then? Back then it was like $1.99. They used to have a, a discount rack. You still have this? Yeah. Well, yeah, I still have how all much my records. Final? Yeah, how many do you have? I yeah. still have more. Like, thousand, yeah, 2,000. Yeah, I, I have like a wall like this size and I have them categorized. Well, then Amazing. how many? Then you should know the total number. I think I have about uh, 2,000. 2,000. Yeah. Okay. Amazing. All right. Uh, Re- records were heavy. You know, if it was still the age of vinyl, I wouldn't be able to be a mobile disc jockey anymore. I'll, I'll tell you the most uh, amazing record collection I ever saw was Oedipus, who was the program director of WBCN BCN up there in Boston. Boston. Yeah. Yeah. And I went over his house, a few of us, to you know have some wine and just hang out and stuff. He has a whole room that looks like a record store to begin with. And then, then his staircase is lined with records all the way up on the wall. It was unbelievable how many, really? how much he had in that house. But he, he had it displayed in such it. a way. Way that it almost looked like a museum. Bill Maher apparently amazing. the same thing. Bill Maher has just uh, is a big, big uh, vinyl file. Yeah, I think that's amazing. To me. I never went yeah. to his house, but I heard Gino Michelini was a Los Angeles DJ that forever. I'd and I went to his house, and he had it similar to what is you he the described. one with the wild hair? I don't think so. He didn't have any hair when I knew him. Oh, okay, you know, I, I love fishing through crates of fucking records. The same I never got still, tired of it. Lost, still never to this got day, tired. Love. No, you uh, give him a half a joint. Love, and I'm like this. Yeah, he's like a chipmunk. Oh, yeah. 
ears. <laughs> this nigga got Roy ears. Yeah, you know, pulling out the Linda Ronstadt. Running away. Pulling out the Linda Ronstadt with her nipple showing. I certainly can relate to that feeling. Maybe not anymore, but you just brought back a memory. When you just find that one one, you're like, fuck yeah. Oh, shit. Oedipus also had a wolf. Oh, oh really? A real one, not the not the no, I know, sort of yeah. wolf, like, like a dude, pet wolf. Yeah, yes, full hundred percent fucking wolf. How maybe do you get to keep maybe that? not a hundred percent because now now, now the, you have to know. I do, a dude in my neighborhood in L.A. had one because we were. It took us a year before anyone would approach him because we thought you think it's a husky, right, or a malamute, a no, little bit, he, and then you finally fucking realize, and you know, and then my neighbor got so friendly with him that one dude, one time when the dude went on vacation, my neighbor had, got to wolf sit. Really, <laughs> <laughs> wolf sit. Yeah. <laughs> this is as full bred as you could get. I think it is, was full bred, and I mean, this is many years ago. So I, you I saw it before, you dude. It scared the fuck out of me, man. They were, I mean, really high. Yeah, of course, came the right up to us as soon as we came in the house and peed all over the fucking place. And he's like, oh yeah, that, you know, unlike a dog, you really can't get that out, out right. of out of the the wolf. He's got to <laughs> mark his territory. Yeah. And Oedipus had this gorgeous house, and the things just peeing fucking everywhere every time a stranger came to the house. Just to mark his territory. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Balls. And then he had he had to have a run in the backyard because these things just need to run. fucking run for real. Not yeah. like a dog where you give them a couple minutes outside. This thing needed it or it was going to die. That's awesome. But I, I do believe it was illegal. I do believe he it went, has to be. I do right? believe he went full wolf. And I know people are going to now call and say that. They can let me. In. I lived in Thousand Oaks and the dude, hmm. I'm, I'm telling you, I, I think if you can go through proper channels, it might be legal or, or different you can get states. A permit for it. Different yeah. states, different laws. One of those. Right. Yeah. But he, uh, yeah, it was scary, man. I did not like that at all. And and that was like a second or third one. It was his thing. His second yeah. or third wolf? Yeah. yeah, it was his thing, man. Did you, you ever see that it? movie? Did you ever see that movie Dances with Wolves? <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> I like when he goes up to tell the Indians there's Buffalo. You ever, he goes, you ever listen to Jay Giles Man lead Tatanka. singer Peter Wolf? Oh, God, this <laughs> what was that movie Jack Nicholson was in? Was that Wolf? Wolfen? Wolfen? Did you guys Wolfen? remember Teen Wolf? <laughs> yes. Michael wow. J. Fox. Thank you. <laughs> For the people that don't know, he, Dennis and is really, real. And by the way, Kurt made a good point about Teen Wolf. It was just yeah. a, a white dude turning black. Yes. Because right. he got really? better at Dancing and basketball, <laughs> so it was just him wolfing out into blackness. <laughs> they disguised it with wolf, but now yeah. he can dunk. They, could, right, they couldn't really write the story <laughs> exactly. And, so and they you said, remember, All right, let's just make it a wolf. And right. you remember the guy who played his dad on Teen Wolf? He was an F troop. We yes, used to he play was. the bugle. Correct, yeah. Mundo. Yeah. Yes, mm. I know that dude's name. I did a pilot with him in L.A. His name is James. Uh, Ah, oh, something. Carville. No. <laughs> <laughs> stick with, people that, uh, stick uh, with stories uh, that have no point. For the people, <laughs> that, are, for the people that are wondering, Dennis is the real deal. He's not a fucking character. No, he's real. Uh, my good friend, uh, Joey from uh, Paisano. Well, it used to be Paisano's uh, down there in Little Italy. Yeah. Uh, he no longer owns that place, but still a friend of mine. He goes, I'm ashamed I went to Slip Disc to, uh, Slipped Disc 2. Ugh. Ah. Ugh. Something in common with Falcone. Yeah, that, was a, that was a good store. That that was a good store. <laughs> Look at he's all excited. Yeah. There was also a store. I used to love finding those stores that had the records. Weren't they all good Slip stores, disc. though? Those... In the back of the disc. I rack. used to love them. Every Tow- record store, because you can find something that you couldn't find somewhere else, and most record stores have like a small record store. Or Tower. Ta- the or Tower Records. Oh, no, no, time in oh my God. Oh. The same thing. Half a joint and five hours later, I'm not even on floor two yet. I used to get laid in Tower. You know, oh, yeah, that yeah. fucking yeah. Village Tower was the best. That was a really? wonderful story. Yeah. There, wonderful. The last time I was really into that was Newberry Con. Comics up there in Boston. They had a nice. Oh yeah, yeah. But uh, you know, in Japan, it's still big. Record stores like that is still a huge I thing. I saw the documentary. Yeah. It's sad that it ain't here no more. Though. I it's sad. It. There's a documentary about it, that. It's yeah, about Tower Records. Yes. Yeah, that yes. was that was good. And, <laughs> that was good. And you know, Tower Records completely gone in the states. Yep. But for some reason, in Japan, in still a, hot, still in big a, in Japan. In a few cities, they love Tower Records. It's the only still. places on the planet where it's still left. Nice. Yeah, there's like Japan. how many nice. more? I, there's a bunch. and they're thinking about bringing another one back to the city now after Japan has so much success in the last six seven years. Right. Yeah, look at but up. all around the globe closed down. Every Tower Records, yeah. and then they yeah. opened up in Japan because nice. that market was so hungry it. for it. The documentary right. on Tower Records is really good. It's dope, and uh, and it, it's so sad at the end because you, re- you realize the <laughs> whole nice. fucking thing has fallen apart, and then the end of the movie is basically the guy going to Japan because that's it's still, it's still, it's still completely happening. And they look at him there. like he's a big star over there. That right. movie was produced, I think, by Tom Hanks. Yes, son, right? it was, Dennis. Yes, it was nice. <laughs> big in Japan. Sweet. Is that what it's called? No, that's a song by Alpha. I, I knew that. <laughs> yeah. I, that's why I said that earlier. Yeah, I, I knew you were going to come in with Alphaville. What was their other song? Jay Okerson's a big Alphaville. Uh, uh, Forever Young, right? 
Wait, wait. He's an actual Alpha. He knows Alphaville. Yeah, yeah, Alpha, yeah. Didn't they have Forever Young, a song that was also in the movie the, Napoleon Dynamite? Yep. Yeah. Was yeah. that Alphaville? Not to be confused with Rod Stewart's Forever Young. I was watching Rushmore the other night. Oh, oh great yeah. movie. Yeah. Napoleon, yeah. I like great Napoleon movie. Dynamite reminds yeah. me of Rushmore. I like the, the I King song in there. Oh, yeah. Not worrying about that girl? Yeah. yeah Nothing in this song. world, right. That was a good movie. Yeah, that was a good movie. That's wonderful, dude. Yeah, Rushmore is good. Rushmore's was still, outstanding. It was yeah. filmed in Texas, in Houston. Didn't look like was that. Was it? I, I, I thought it was that. like in yeah, New England Stockholm. somewhere. Yeah, me too. That's yeah. what they were going for, yeah. yes. You know what this is? Tangent Thursday, where we just go off on different things. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. It was great. <laughs> yeah, it's wonderful. Wait a minute. Rushmore was shot in Houston? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's That's a, weird. There's that a website weird. where you could look up where, where movies were shot and everything. I would have sworn yeah. that was like Mass or fucking... Yeah, I, I thought it was you know somewhere in New England. Yes. Like Dead Poet Society. What's the... You know the website address? Is it who gives a fuck? <laughs> I don't know. You, you just this Google is, it, you know, because yeah, sometimes yeah, things like wonderful. that really are intriguing <laughs> to me. <laughs> Dennis, who are you voting for, Dennis? Let me know that. <laughs> What's that? Who are you voting for? He's a Trump guy. I know. Yeah. Are you? Mr. T. Mr. T. Mr. T's got I'm, problems with these women I'm coming out saying uh, uh, Mr. T groped them. Dennis been around music guys though. You know groping is part of the it's part from the course, right? Back in the back in the good old days, I was radio. Say, yeah. Here we go. Yeah, yeah. he's, he's got to have yeah. some kind of pussy Filthy. grabbing young, story. Young, young ladies would come in, yeah, right. and wear the mini skirts and stuff. Right. So so what happened? You look. You just used to say, "Hey, you look good today," and and that's hey, you're looking fine. You can't do that anymore. No, I was yeah. looking for a better story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's your story. You're well, I, yeah, I didn't. Know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping score. Yeah, I thought you were going to tell us how Casey Kasem was finger blasting with somebody. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. some nonsense. <laughs> you, you have that. Do, you've heard the Casey Kasem uh, outtake, right? The dog story. Yes. No, yeah, ponderous, yes. ponderous. Man. Oh yeah. God, ponderous. that's, uh, that's what a classic. That? That's what a good. One. Where he loses his mind because uh, somebody on, calls try. in and yeah. says, "You never heard this one? It's an old one. It's really it's like the farting preacher. It's it's an old." one. Go all fucking Persian. He, on go, him? he all he goes batshit <laughs> crazy for uh, on the lady for here. It's quick. We'll be right back. I can't after believe you've never heard this. I might a have. caller from Des Moines, Iowa, calls in and says, "Dear Casey, <laughs> then he go for a long life. distance dedication, and this one is about kids and pets and a situation that we can all understand, whether we have kids or pets or neither. It's from a man in Cincinnati, Ohio, <laughs> and here's what he writes: Listen, dear, Casey. "Dear Casey, this may seem to be a strange dedication <laughs> request, but I'm quite sincere, and it'll mean a lot if you play it. Recently, there was a death in our family. He was a little dog named." Snuggles, but he was most certainly a part of. Let's come start again. From coming out of the record, play the record, okay? Please, please. Here you go. See, when you come out of those up-tempo goddamn numbers, man, it's impossible to make those transitions. And then you got to go into somebody dying. You know, they do this to me all the time. I don't know what the hell they do it for, but goddamn it, if we can't come out of a slow record, I don't understand it. Is Don on the phone? Okay. I want a goddamn concerted effort to come out of a record that isn't a fucking up-tempo record every time I do a goddamn death dedication. <laughs> Now, make it, and I also want to know what happened to the pictures I was supposed to see this week. <laughs> it's a god, last goddamn time. I want somebody to use his fucking brain to not come out of a goddamn record that is, uh, that, that's up tempo, and I gotta talk about a fucking dog dying. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes it's on, good. Wow, it's still and good, then right. he goes on to read, you know, the station promos, you, you had things like that. <laughs> Like you would say, hi, it's Casey Kasem. Listen to American Top 40 on WKCK right. or something. Sunday mornings at 9 o'clock. But the one he read was like Sunday morning at 2 a.m. And he freaked. 2 a.m.? Oh, yeah. That's what his show was <laughs> There's on. There's more. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, he realized that they <laughs> exactly. heard his show. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 2 a.m.? Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> That's part of that whole thing, right? <laughs> yeah, that, well, that was a shorter version. That was the edited version. Let me, uh, let uh. me say hi to Kevin. He wants to talk about his wolf. Uh, Kevin in Cleveland. Hey, Go before ahead. he does that, I have to leave. I got a meeting. Bye, Dennis. Thank God. And if you want, I'll come back later. <laughs> Please. Yeah, Please we'll, come back. Let us we're, think about Come back it. and we're going to play Peter and the Wolf. <laughs> come it, back, Shane. Come back. There he goes. Dennis Falcon. Dennis! <laughs> Just walks in now. d buggies. <laughs> what the fuck happened You've to my career? made a horror of nothing. <laughs> Holy shit. It's uh, a lateral move. Uh, yeah, no <laughs> kidding. It's a lateral move. Uh, Kevin, go ahead, buddy. Oh, man. Oh, dude, you've been doing this since you're 18. Vic and Henley, this is the best you got? Come on, man. Vic and Henley, you mean Vic and Sherrod. If you're going to shit on us, yeah. get it right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> My new name, Henley? <laughs> Vic and I'll Henley. I'll take it. 
Anything this else? is the best you got, Vic and Shrod. Yeah, yeah, we had, you're 18. Yeah. Come on, dude. All right, second Come on. take. Yeah, yeah, like the we're, best on what we got. I don't know. I uh, mean, you, you got when you want to do those type of phone calls, pick a day where it's obviously not working. He fumbled all of himself. <laughs> it was right. just gross. <laughs> what a big dummy. You, you pick a day where it's obvious the show is just flat. Yeah, and then then it'll hurt a little. He's bit. like, I finally got through, but it don't make sense. Still right. doing it. It's not gonna <laughs> sticking with it. Uh, Alec, uh, <laughs> you got Alec Trebek here. This was this is uh, going viral today. Alex Trebek drops the hammer and delivers sick burn. This no, what, on a girl? You know, on it's, girl? Just, it's just yeah, sort of, it's yet. just dry, but it was really funny. It is funny. Hey. I think it's very fun. It's called Nerdcore Hip Hop. It's Nerdcore Hip Hop. Yes, um, it's. Uh, People who identify as nerdy, rapping about the things they love, video games, science fiction, having a hard time meeting romantic partners, you know. <laughs> it's really catchy and fun. Losers, in other words. Well, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> sure. I te- no, I'm teasing you. <laughs> I love it. Losers. I mean, yeah, it's funny. What is that called? Nerd hip hop? Nerd core hip hop. Nerd core hip hop. Yeah. What is that? Like they just like uh, they get together, rap and, about and, and bullies are bad though. Says. Let me get this straight: bullies are bad, says. but nerdcore hip hop is okay. Nerdcore hip hop. <laughs> yeah. That's right. what happens when you get rid of bullies. I, I've never, uh, uh, never heard of the nerdcore hip hop. Everybody deserves hip hop in their life. Why not a nerd? Sure. Why yeah. not? Yeah. Urkel's been rhyming from you know <laughs> from years ago. For a long time. <laughs> Every season finale of fucking Family Matters, Urkel had a rhyme. <laughs> sure, he was Stefan, but I know Urkel when I see him. Uh, Jaleel White getting two checks. <laughs> Motherfucker, slug as shit. And he got that cereal money. <laughs> Motherfucker. Uh, oh, I forgot that we had to mention uh, Chris Christie. Yeah, judge issues criminal summons yeah. for Christie over Bridgegate. Yeah. Okay. So he's another one that just lied Fine. lied through his fucking teeth. Of course, we he think he has something everything. to do with it. It's like nothing went through uh, Jersey without Christie. Everybody was scared of him. Everybody knew that he was the boss. So you, what you, who, what, who's going to do something? What employee's going to do something without running it past your boss or his? Right. And when you're, you and, and, and then, uh, uh, if I'm going to jail, then your ass is going with me. If yeah. you told me to do something and I'm going to jail, so these two fuckers who are going to yes, jail, Kelly. no shock that they're going to go, oh, by the way, he said do it. She's right. a cutie, too, so, ain't she? Yeah, it's awful. It's she a, is it's a, a cutie yeah. patootie, she, that, little, absolutely. that little Kelly chick. Now, the whole thing, it's a fascinating story. So they issued a criminal summons for him uh, in his role. Criminal summons, right? With the George Washington Bridge scandal, what's a what's a criminal summons? Uh, we got to see him in prison in those big boy pants, <laughs> Up to big his orange, orange fucking jumpsuit, looking he like like hey Kool Aid, the orange, <laughs> he's, he's just looking like the great pumpkin a, Charlie yeah, Brown, yeah, just running through a wall <laughs> <laughs> somewhere. That's gonna be. Oh, him looking like 300 pounds of hazmat. I'd love it. I'd love it. Were oh. you in here when we were looking at his summer outfit where he looked like a Pokemon yes. Go ball? With the, yes, with the red pink. Were, that was I thought you were here yes, for that was, one. Yeah. Can, can you pop that up yep. one more time? Please. I'm a huge fan of Chris Christie wearing stuff he should not be wearing. <laughs> he looks like he should have a big lollipop sucker his life. giant fucking shorts pulled way too yep, high this summer. Yeah. yeah, that's great. With a tiny red... Uh, Collared uh, short sleeve shirt. It's so dad. Low socks. It's so dad of him. Oh, is my. that his son behind him getting out the car? I don't know. I hope so. Or some, I hope some so. kind of aid or something. So uh, it's like a pamper. Like his shorts, like a big ass pamper. So the Christie thing's getting ugly. And then you got a nine nine one one operator accused of hanging up on emergency calls. Now this, I uh, we have actual audio, uh, Paul. Just a news story. Just a news story. I want the audio. Former nine one one operator in Houston repeatedly hung up on frightened callers, telling them things like "Ain't nobody got time for this." <laughs> <laughs> oh, Rashida, that's good. I know exactly who they talking about. Did you say Rashida? Rashida. The name's worse than Rashida. What is it? Kren- Crenshonda. Oh, Crenshonda. <laughs> Crenshonda Williams, 43, spent her days at a Houston Rashida's emergency sister. center <laughs> taking thousands of short calls or conversations lasting less than 20 seconds. She's just hanging up on she several people? To, she didn't want to fucking deal with that it. her? Yeah, that's her. I like how you said Rashida, and it really is. It was close. Crenshonda. Crenshonda. Yes, the Harris County woman is facing two misdemeanor charges of interference with emergency telephone call uh, after she confessed to ignoring calls because she did not want to talk to anyone. <laughs> Right. What a that's dumb... Horrible. That's fabulous. Are uh, you for real? That's wonderful. On March 12th, Williams allegedly hum, hung up on a shopper at a convenience store that was being held up again, uh, at gunpoint. Excuse me. They just said, this is 911. How can I help you? Recall Huli. 
Lee, who was buying lottery tickets. I was trying to finish my sentence, and we got disconnected. Uh, the man told local affiliate, blah, 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 that only a few seconds had passed before Williams terminated the call. He called back and spoke to another operator, but it was too late. By the time cops got to the scene, the store manager had been shot and killed. What? Oh, wow. There's a turn. <sighs> what? There's a turn. Who saw that coming? This Not was, Rashida. This was fun for a while. What? Yeah, I enjoyed the story until this point. During another call, Williams allegedly told the security guard who was calling to report a reckless driver that nobody was concerned about the incident. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for this, she said. Oh, According sh- to the, char- the charge documents. <laughs> for real, she added. For real. Well, what was that job before that? McDonald's counter? Man. This is like Larry Miller's character uh, in is it, uh, Best in Show, where he's the hostage negotiator. Oh, That's yeah. what he does for a living. <laughs> He runs out. He's the worst hostage negotiator of all time. Yeah. I'll stab you in the fucking eye if you don't get down off that roof. So help me God. It's like, help. Somebody's trying to kill me. Girl, bye. <laughs> bye, Felicia. <laughs> Somebody trying to kill you. Ain't nobody care about you. Yeah. <laughs> bye, girl. <laughs> Uh, I just turned on the show, and you're making fun of your crumple spine. Ha, ha, your poor, literal, dirty ass. I'm sorry your spine is made of graham crackers and kids' glue. Who's that? My so wife. Like, <laughs> seriously? That's funny. No kidding. She's a keeper. That's good writing. That's great. That's excellent writing. She's the funniest. Holy Read shit. that again. She's, She's been hanging out with Barney crackers. McFarlane. Graham, right. That has a sting of Barley McFarlane in it. She's the funny one in the family. I'm telling you right now. Graham crackers. <laughs> She's a very good, writer, very good writer. I'm sorry your spine is made of graham crackers and kids' glue. <laughs> That's, uh, way to go, Lynn's from the blue line. I like it. I was trying to get some sympathy from Sherrod earlier. I, Vic hasn't even seen me walk yet because I'm not going to walk oh, in front of him. Got out of the chair yet. You're going to cry. You're going to have to literally like, just not, go back yeah, and forth. Yeah, right. I heard him groan a couple of times. It seems sincere. Yeah, every time I move. Uh, that walk was slow and. Like, I really did want to talk about uh, wolves. Unfortunately, that fucking guy was the guy. Oh, prank caller, prank caller. Oh, he was. Oh, okay. he didn't have a wolf. Oh, that's the guy that hated us. Yeah, he hated us. All right. Us. OB Radio is back. We got into a hula hoop uh, loop. Yeah, like Katie Sunshine. No pun intended. We w- we went on Katie Sunshine's uh, YouTube page and home, oh, as Sherrod would say, oh money. <laughs> which she one got did you like? Moves, which one did you like the best? I like it. I think I like the painting one. The I like the painting one, one and the one she did for you guys, the Opie and Anthony shirt one. Yeah, yeah, that was really cool of her back in the day. She uh, did that for us, but uh, I so buy, sexy. Oh my God, where is there is Vic? Sorry, I want to buy the painting. I want to buy one of the paintings. I'm telling you, she's so sexy. <laughs> Girl. The whole thing was wonderful. I thought I heard somewhere in there, I heard, how much you think one well, of those goes for? <laughs> what? what? <laughs> That's what Ken said. He's missing a point of all That's what Ken said. How can she was figured right. out how to, I mean, she put the paint inside the hula hoop, put some holes in the hula hoop, obviously, and yeah. then she made a painting. Put the canvases around her, two on, uh, like, you know, uh, easels. easels, and then one on the ground. Right. And she had a little do-rag on top because she didn't want to get the paint in her hair, and her whole body has uh, mm. got a lot of paint on it. She got the, the holy jeans. Yeah. It's a nice look. She got good. a nice little Technicolor to her. It's a very nice look. Uh, That's so, good hillbilly fun. You know, blue jeans, is. hula hoop, and right. paint. <laughs> <laughs> Trifecta. That's a hillbilly Christmas. <laughs> That's my second country album. Blue jeans, hula hoops, and paint. <laughs> That's Trump's America. <laughs> that could be a hit song. You got you to gotta get writing. You got to get on that one immediately. Uh, you don't know how many pieces of paper in my apartment with shit like that. Really? really? I, mean, I went through for weeks. I was just, I would at night, I would before I'd go to bed, I'd get too stoned. And I would think of if I was this kind of musician, what would the albums be called? And I went through like a blues, a funk, a reggae, Zydeco. Yeah. <laughs> Zydeco. I, went, I had all kinds of just pieces. Of, I'd wake up the next morning going, what the fuck is wrong with you? Why are you writing frog gigging on a piece of paper? <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck does frog gigging mean? And it was when I was in my, you know, Buckwheat Zydeco phase. Yeah. <laughs> Zydeco. Uh, so go check out Katie Sunshine. And she's the one that's in the record company video. For Rita Mae Young, that's that's why we got on that loop. But, but perfect for the video, right? That was Sexy. awesome. Yeah, perfect. Really, yeah, it was great. And a great tune as well. Great oh, tune. Uh, you want to take great another scenery. chance on a wolf call? <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. If it's everybody's going to hate right. us, let's we got a couple other things we definitely want to do. But let's say hi to Rick in New York. Go ahead, Rick. Yeah, hey, how are you doing? Um, I have a um, eight year old male wolf, and uh, he's pretty cool. He uh, sleeps with us, and he's just pretty much like a dog, but, uh, but he's still got the wolf in him, so uh, he's about 98% pure. 
So if you have any questions, I can tell you. Now, where you live? You need to know. Where in New York are you, do you live? Upstate? Uh, Left Pauling. Left Pauling. I don't even know where that is. Where is that? Yeah, I, uh, kind of on the, above Westchester. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Okay. Is it legal to yeah. own a wolf, a 98% wolf? Uh, we call them a, uh, a a Transylvanian sheepdog. That's yeah. what we call them. Yeah, they, they, they <laughs> don't do that around his friends, though. That's embarrassing. There's a place. <laughs> Wolf the Transylvanian sheepdog? It's like, motherfucker, let's call me Earl. <laughs> uh, someone, someone's got to help me out with this, too, because I didn't, I didn't think we were going to talk about this today. But there's a place, I think it's in New Hampshire, where all the people that get the wolves and they think they can raise them as pets and realize, holy fuck, this thing, is, goes wrong. This thing is tracking me at night while I'm trying to sleep. Oh, oh, shit. They give it to this place. I think it's in, in New Hampshire, and it's a whole... Oh, just a whole place uh, filled with wolves that were trying to be domesticated. Now, do they keep them there, or do they like try to train them to release them later? No, no, because a lot of them are like too uh, friendly with humans, hybrids and stuff. So, oh, and they want some. No, it's they, like a they research. Have, I mean, a rescue kind of. Yes, thing. Yeah. they have figured out. Let's. Uh, all right, we will accept your your wolf that you thought was going to be a good pet, but you scared <laughs> shitless of it. So it's going to be an Animal Planet show, wolves and paroles. Yeah, and they already had that show. Remember the dude with the wolves? Pit bulls. They had the dude with the wolves. Oh Remember yeah, him? that's right. Oh, yeah. that was the greatest thing. You know, when he got his wife to go in the wolf enclosure with him. That's right. Because right. you could tell she was really not on board with it. This is how white people die, by the yeah, way. Yeah, <laughs> That dude, that was that was like two seasons. But do you yeah, have that's to get, right. Do you, do you have to get, is it legal, you have to go around and do the Transylvanian sheepdog thing, or it's oh, yeah. because it's illegal, you, or do you have to get permits, oh. or... No, we we just we, the vet just calls them a uh, uh, white shepherd husky mix. So it comes out to the, uh, the vet. Did yeah. It, did so, you, do you get it as a cub or what? they're yeah. not called cubs? Oh, what are they called? Puppy. Uh, what are they? What are, huh? Just, yeah, it's a puppy basically. Uh, yeah, my, called puppies. Our, right. our friend had a uh, was raising a pack of them in Florida, and we brought home, uh, one home. And you got to remember that every single domesticated dog in the universe is directly descended, descended from, from wolves. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, but from years and years ago, my yeah. we're yeah. descended from fucking apes. But, but <laughs> like, yeah. you want an ape living uh, your roommate? Yeah, we, we didn't figure that out in 2010. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. But, um, that was, the brain that was the hundreds of years that we finally said, dogs. okay, okay, enough time's gone by. We can handle dogs in our houses. Right. There's 800. Uh, there's a million comics having the jokes about that. About the you know the Yorkie. He had no. Nubbins. He had uh, wasn't it Nubbins. The, 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 your, oh, your stuffing, dog. Stuffing, Stuff, stuffing. stuffing. Sorry, yeah. he had a Yorkie. My it, dog was named after Stove Top Stuffing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's what he looked like when he, he was born. He had a he, had he a was Yorkie. the runt of the Yorkie. Fucking yeah, paid again five hundred dollars for him in Maryland. He's a good dog. Yeah, he was yeah. the best. No, he was dog. a really good dog. Yeah, I, I had a dog for dog. fifteen years. Yeah, no, I knew that. I was yeah. you know. Yeah, you yeah you knew. Stuffing. I love stuffing. Right. You're, you're not scared of your wolf that he might love them. Might turn on you guys. No, no, he, he's he's so in love. They're very, very loyal animals. They're very pack related, you know. So, um, you know, I'm the alpha in the house, although he thinks he is occasionally. But uh, no, he's very, very pack related. They're they're not really um, aggressive towards people at all. I mean, they're they much rather go, go away from people than you know uh, harass them. Uh, right, right, right. I I would That's like to believe that, but when I was in Oedipus's house, I wanted nothing to do with this thing. Uh, it was intimidating. He knew he ran that house though the one yeah, you met he peed he came right up to us and peed yeah, ask, ask right the, in front of us man. how does how does the guy on the phone how yeah. do you, so you said sometimes he thinks he's the alpha and when you really are how do y'all resolve that yeah <laughs> when, <laughs> when that comes up from time to time <laughs> really how does question. that one get figured out yeah you can't just hit him with a newspaper on the nose uh, you know, he, 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 there's certain things you don't want to do. You don't want to try and, like, he didn't like being in the cage when he was a puppy. Um, and, uh, you know, if you try and corner him or you know, try and make him do something he doesn't want to, he'll let you know. But that that's really about what it. What happens if your yeah. wife What happens if your wife is on a rag? She can't stay at the house? No, she, no. She uh, she, I got questions. She, she uh, he, he loves her. Uh, uh, he thinks that she's his mate. You know, so uh, he's smelling uh, on it. Oh man, he's smelling that Is blood like that, you Any of that uh, dry humping going on? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He sounds like he's the alpha. You the beta. He's fucking your wife. <laughs> the dry humping is wet humping oh, now, yeah. motherfucker. Uh, oh, wow. 
hard, it's, man. It's a really, really interesting experience. You know, I'm not sure I would do it again. Right. He was destructive when he was a, he was a puppy, you know, took out a couch and stuff. But uh, uh, but it was really interesting. It's just the eyes, the intelligence in the eyes, and just the, the soulfulness in the eyes. It's really, really intense. Does he pee all over your house? No, not not ever. No. Well, I don't know. I, I, although, uh, to be fair to Oedipus, I, uh, maybe I should be blowing his spot up today. But uh, I, I do remember it was a relatively new wolf, so I think he was still, oh, still getting okay. used to it. Yeah, yeah, trying, to, tra- him. trying to train him and uh, get him all set. But maybe this guy's well, like <laughs> his wolf is like, "Hey, I'm fucking his wife, so I might as well not piss in his house." <laughs> <laughs> I ain't gonna be an ass. I'm already a wolf. I'm not gonna be an asshole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. His wolf is dry humping his wife. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> But no, his his may have been more of a hybrid because some of the hybrid ones get a little squirrely. No, so, no, Oedipus it, was serious about his. He he wanted as pure as possible. I do remember that part of it. What's yours? His name? Okay. What's your wolf name? Uh, uh, Nanook. Nanook. Up Nanook. The north. Yeah, yeah Nanook well, the north. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> Couldn't go with White Fang. <laughs> That's just too easy. Isn't it? <laughs> but it, but it's, it's funny. Certain people will see that he's a wolf, like kids know right away he's a wolf. But uh, like adults, when they see him, they just think he's a white shepherd. You know, it's, it's really all in the perception. But kids, kids see right away. Kids will see a German shepherd and yell wolf. I right, fuck it. That's my number one dog. I Ger- hate German Shepherds. Oh, I love German Shepherds. I used to have a German Shepherd growing up. Yeah, right. I love, we, love my them. buddy had, had a white one named Kino. Oh. And that, that was one of my first introductions to a big dog, and right. he was just a joy. So a I've joy. never been afraid of what, big What big dog big. bit you as a kid that you're scared of to this day? Because that's, that's my story. The only, the only time I was I was bitten by a Great Dane, and I still love all dogs. Oh, okay. So, but, I yeah. got chased by a Doberman, but I jumped the fence. I, oh. jumped, I jumped the fence cutting through a yard, and, and, and t- he bit me in the back, and I got over the fence in time to see the Beware of Dobermans. dogs. Yeah. I love Dobermans, though, because my no. aunt had a Doberman for like 15 years, called uh, maybe 12 years, called Lady, and I loved her Same growing thing. up. I'm too, I have an example in my life where it's always, it's never a bad story. Right. You, I, had, you know, I yeah. had a friend growing up, you went to his house, and he had a Doberman, very aggressive, but it was never going to like bite your face off. But mm-hmm. as a kid, you were scared ah, shitless, nah, and see. my friend thought it was the yeah. funniest fucking thing. Yeah, I don't know that. I don't, we didn't. Uh, yeah, That's how Kurt's it. dog, Kurt Metzger, he has a dog, him like and Karen, that. and his dog bit Karen's sister nose off. Off, it split it in. It was sp- wow. hanging off her face. This was like less than a year ago. <laughs> wow, what kind they of dog? still got the dog. Doberman, wow. dog. oh nice, okay. yeah, no, a sweet dog. Are... But he, he loses it and he grabbed her face day. and ripped her nose off. Dobermans are a close second for me. Pit bulls, not so much. It's a, it goes ger- German Shepherd and then Doberman. Yeah, I got, I, just, I got no problem. <laughs> I love dogs. Period. Yeah, I, I love, love dogs, dogs. I love too, death, but, but yeah. I I mean, got bit on a paper route, and I was never the same. He chased with, you on your bike? Or yeah, you yeah. Chase and grabbed the side of my knee. I, it wasn't a major injury. But it's but scary. Did you have to get the scared. tetanus shot? All, all that, yeah. 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 No stitches, but right. it was pretty good. And yeah. it, was a good it was a good nip. You knew the neighbor who dog it was? No, they? I didn't know. Did, Did you, you go back? It was about a mile uh, on the way to the station. You didn't go back to Centerport, Long Island. No, see, people I don't, I, actually, I don't even. Uh, I don't even think I remember the house. Like, it just came out of nowhere, so it was like it, it's got to be one of these houses. It's like here. in New York City, stray dogs used to be a big, big thing. Like packs of dogs running around the fucking city <laughs> was always it was a norm <laughs> in like the early eighties on the Upper West Side. <laughs> no, Brooklyn. Uh, uh, I'm talking uh, Brooklyn. Uh, yeah. Why <laughs> they come down? They come down. They come packs down. of dogs were always. <laughs> oh, I know you people come down. Oh, we're talking about dogs. Oh, sorry, we're talking about dogs. Dogs. Sorry. <laughs> oh, dogs, you mean? Dogs. Oh. Wow, I got confused for a second. Oh, roaming Morningside Park. It used to be, I'm telling you, it used to be fucking packs of wild dogs out. You remember this growing up? Oh, yes. No question about it. No kidding. No no question about it. Yes. I've been They're here flippant. since 85. I don't remember the dog. Oh, I remember. They weren't here like, in 85 when, when we're, I, I was here. in junior high school. Oh, yeah. Sure, we used I to believe see, you. Like, even go walking up Saratoga in the morning, <laughs> you would be like this. I must be late for school because the pack of dogs ain't here. Because <laughs> <laughs> every morning. And we see them and then they leave and go somewhere else. So you know you late and not for school if the dogs are still there chewing on some shit in a fucking abandoned lot. Uh, were, were you scared of them? No. I, after you get used to them, you used to see them. You'd be like this. Oh, I'm late. These things oh my don't go. Good for you. <laughs> Set my watch by them. Wow. That's so good. That's wonderful. Yeah, that's real New York shit. I believe you. Your that's experience crazy. is a little different than mine. A little bit. You know, a little, little bit. A little bit. crazy good. Uh, all right, Rick. I think we... Any more wolf questions? Questions. I think that's it. The dry humping of the wife. We're not going to be. I actually remember it one time. It's a good experience. It's pretty much a trip, but uh, uh, not to be afraid of. Yeah. He's a good dog. Uh, I remember one time in seventh grade when I was walking to school. One of the Thanks, dogs Rick. had died. 
out of the, the pack dogs, right? And he was in a lot, and he his body was just dead dead. And then the next day we saw him, he had maggots on him. Then the next day, he, like he did all oh, the way went through. And then me and my skeleton. boy Laron, we got his skull, we got a stick, put it through the jawbone and the skull, took it to science class, my biology teacher, and got an A for the semester. Nice. Did a whole paper there you on go. it from an abandoned dog fucking skull. Right. Those were in the, the hood. Lemons and the lemonade. Right, lemonade, friend, baby. Right there, baby. Those, are, those were the days. You can't do that nowadays. And when we, we took it in there, we both had, held different sides of the stick with the skull in the middle. And my biology teacher, this is how gangster he was. He just took his bare hand, <laughs> threw the stick <laughs> down, and just looked all in it. It was maggots all over this fucking thing a minute ago. He was just like, ah, it's like this nigga. It's about how, how, it. Do you remember how bad it smelled? It was awful at the beginning, but after we got it, it wasn't smelling at all. No kidding. But it looked still gross. Uh, oh, yeah, there was one more wolf call we have to take. Uh, hopefully this one's real. Frank in Hartford. Frank, go ahead. Yeah, my cousin has a wolf and he needs the water. He what? He has a wolf. He has a wolf? What? It's like it's like a tiny story. He needs the water. You know, water wolf? Water wolf. What Warner, oh, Warner wolf, like the sportscaster. Oh. oh. Right? Yeah, that's all that was. Are you? That's yeah. it. Yeah, he has a wolf Dude, in Andy Warner. I mean, the, the, the <laughs> story people. goes: my brother used to have a wolf, and then we had to get rid of it because it killed a burglar. That's a pretty good phone call to take for yeah. a radio yeah. show. Sure. It was bullshit. It wasn't true. Oh, God, you wanted to have a. All right. <laughs> <laughs> They can't all be Jim. I, I know. I, I, <laughs> no. I definitely want to take more phone calls on the new show. So, okay. But, well, you're but, running a risk there. You're playing uh, no with fire. kidding. Playing with fire. You want to talk to Chuck real fast? Chuck from North Carolina. Yeah, Chuck. Chuck. Let's do it. And we still got to get the Lewis Black story. Oh, that's an easy story. I, I can tell that anytime. All right. Sure, but I, I'll, I'll be. Happy and I don't want to talk it. about Saddam Hussein's uh, secret torture chamber in New York City. What? Front page of uh, the paper today. In New York. Uh huh. Chuck, go ahead. I'm so jealous. Hey, man, I was going to tell you, that's your lineup you got right there, Opie. <laughs> no shit, I love these guys. <laughs> that's, 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 that's top shelf right there, what you got. You got the, you got the urban, you got the Alabama redneck, and you got the goddamn Opie. So, I mean, that's it, <laughs> it all right there. <laughs> Cornucopia. <laughs> Cornucopia. <laughs> I was going to tell you, man, I was in Louisiana last night. You fucking people down there know how to party. Where? I don't know. You're just discovering that, Chuck? Louisiana knows oh, how to party. Oh, what Jesus. Well, I ain't never. I've been to fucking New Orleans. Right. But I went to I went to a football game in Lafayette or however you say it. Lafayette. Lafayette, <laughs> yes. Yeah, Lafayette. They got I drunk as shit down there. Oh, yeah, they party down there. I did a couple shows in Lafayette. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, spot. the universe on the campus. Oh, no, yeah, that's great. Yeah, spot. It's great. Good fun. Oh, so you're back. I went to Appalachian State game and then came back. And I'm gonna try to get over it and try to go to the Tennessee Alabama game Saturday. Now they were on TV last night. Who won that, Chuck? Did your boys win yeah. that? Appalachian State won. That's where I was at. I went okay. to that game. All right. Oh, okay. Up now they're strong. They, they, they should have beat Tennessee week one. They ten, they took overtime Tennessee week one. They should have beat. Uh, fucking not. Tennessee, goddamn! They keep falling behind, man. Goddamn! They can't beat nobody. They, like that. they almost yeah. overcame seven turnovers. They, yeah. they almost uh, fucked <laughs> up seven times and still won the goddamn ball game. It's been fun to watch them. It has been fun to watch them this year. I'm well, telling you. Well, How's Auburn doing? Auburn's four and two. They beat uh, losing. They had the week off this week, and they play Arkansas next. So okay. they beat the shit out of Mississippi State last Saturday. Oh, did they? 35 nothing at halftime. What? Oh, yeah. It wasn't even funny. It was an ass wow. whipping. The run, the first string running back got hurt on the second play of the game, and the backup big bruising dude came in and carried it 38 times for 168 yards or something. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, Cameron Petway. That's, That's a his good name. name. Cameron C K A M R Y N. Cameron <laughs> Petway. I love it. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> No, he was I a think, fucking beast think, on uh, Saturday. <laughs> I think Alabama will beat the shit out of Tennessee, but I got some tickets, and I'm going to go to Calhoun's by the river and eat some ribs and drink some Crown Roll and watch the ball game. Put That's on orange, up. Chuck. Put on orange. That way you can deer hunt before the game, <laughs> go to the game, and then when you're doing your community service picking up trash after the game, <laughs> you never have to change yeah. outfits. It's the same fucking shirt. <laughs> Snow I got a, I got a little joke. I like the old joke. <laughs> kind of like the old I'll joke. I'll tell an old joke every now and then. I kind of like the old joke, Vic. <laughs> I've never heard trouble. that. That's Terry Henley. That's Terry Henley, 1973. That's how old that joke is. That's, That's my brother. Hey, Vic, yes. Vic, have you ever Terry's been down great. there in warm weather? 
where you park your boat on the river and you have to crawl across that. Oh, yes. Boat. Yes, I love that. Now, now that's a party. That that's is a, a hell of a party. party, yes. It's almost like the NASCAR uh, bus crawl that you go across the top of the things in the infield of the NASCAR oh, race. Yeah. Except it's on yeah. the river outside the stadium in and Knoxville. You crawl across. There, there's so many down there that when right. you park, you just have to fucking crawl across everybody else's to finally get to shore. Sh- that and every, every other boat's insane. handing you another drink and another pigs wow. in a blanket awesome. or a that's piece awesome. of rib. Or it's, whoa, it's too good. For a bunch of fucking, yeah. uh, you know, it's a crazy ass environment. But, uh, awesome. You know what? I thought, I thought the best part of it, when I was younger, I liked looking at all the young bitches. And now that I'm older, all them drunk. 50, 60-year-old women with oh, yeah. kids hanging out. Oh, that's beautiful, right. To see just <laughs> yeah. bi- bi- biker couples fucking as you're on your way yeah. to the game. There's just somebody's been, been his girl over the fucking pontoon boat. <laughs> it's like you said, they're always in their Holy 60s. They're all tattooed shit. up. It's, oh, it's, there's nothing better than ugly yeah, people fucking out in public. Yeah, that's that is for great. That. All right, Chuck. Yeah, my- my sister's a damn big wheel down there in Knoxville. She gets me good tickets and they're free, and I can get drunk and stay at her house, so it's a pretty good deal. Yeah, that's a good time, Chuck. That was a great yeah. time. Well, sing okay, Rocky man, Top and beat the fucking Crimson Tide for me. <laughs> uh, you, you don't think they can beat them, do you? Yes, I do. They can tell, if they don't fuck up right and left and get a hold of it, Joshua Dobbs is a uh, hell of a quarterback. They mm-hmm. can beat him. It's in Tennessee. Anything can happen. Anything can happen to that, Nick, yeah. Nick Saban was loose his goddamn mind if they lost to Tennessee. Well, good. Home. I hope so, then. <laughs> More reason to do it. Right, just to make my I'll mom happy. All right, Chuck. All right. Chuck. All right. Hey, hang in there, Sharon. I will, sir. Thank you. <laughs> All right. I appreciate I it. I appreciate it. We got a guy saying there's still packs of dogs uh, running around Brooklyn. See? See? All right. I know this town, man. Just snatch no, shit out born and raised here. This right. is my blood, baby. Saddam Hussein had a secret torture chamber in New York City. Here you go. That's my neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> the mission. Uh, that like, selfish uh, motherfucker. That does look like the Upper neighbor. East Side. I see it. No. The mission of Iraq, which sits on a wealthy Sunday Upper East Side ice. block near Central Park, has a dark secret. Its basement was used as a jail equipped for torture under Saddam Hussein's re- regime, the Post has learned. You know where this is it? Where I know exactly it? Where it, it says 14. Exactly. Said, so it's between 5th and, uh, and, the, and, Madison. and Madison on right. 79th Street. Yeah. Really close to Central Park. When yep. he rose to power in 1979, the despot had the terrifying detention room installed inside the five-story building at 14 East 79th Street, right across from billionaire former Right mayor across from Mayor House. Bloomberg's yes, Bloomberg's home. house. Right across the street. <laughs> what? They were just doing uh, renovations on that building. Uh, the building they showed right here, where they just were doing renovations on the embassy. Oh, A couple wow. of years ago, Yes. Right there, your boy Bloomy. Wow. <laughs> yeah, right up the store from the, of the Polo Mansions. Well, a couple blocks from the Polo Mansions. Two, yeah, yeah, yeah. two old school Ir- Iraqi officials, uh, yeah. Uh, admitted that this was going on. Saddam, uh, Saddam's henchman known as, oh boy, uh, <laughs> Muka Habarat agents. I don't know how you say that far. Uh, frequently imprisoned local Muka Iraqis Habarat. in the basement for up to 15 days at a time, using them as leverage to get their relatives back in the homeland to surrender and cooperate with, uh, with the government. The so they was doing this to American citizens uh, that were Iraqi too? Local, frequently, imp- frequently imprisoned local Iraqis. So I guess wow. Iraqis living in, uh, in, in, in New York. In the city. Good God. Some of the Gestapo-like tactics employed involved the use of copper wire, rubber hoses, and wooden planks. They would also pull out prisoners' nails and beat them to a pulp. On the Upper East Side? Look, and read the next part, dude. It's <laughs> good God. Wow. In, God. In, no. many, in many places, if they killed somebody, they'd ship them in, in custom exempt packages back to Baghdad. Wow. So if it, it went too far in the accident to kill somebody, they just body bagged you and threw you in a crate and FedExed you back to Baghdad. Wow. And because it was a diplomatic community. They can't check it. They can't do anything. Yeah, you can't All check right. the, God. The Imagine just, thinking you made it out of it. You beat the Hussein regime and you're just living the life and you're walking through you Central Park. You just had J.G. Mellons <laughs> having a burger on the upper side. Next thing you know, Iraqi henchmen are dragging you out of there. And pulling your nails off. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> God they, damn. Like you said, they just put the body in a diplomatic box and, yeah, and, and it can just be it. shipped. This is diplomatic. Nobody has the authority to examine it or open That's one. how them good drugs get in the country. What? <laughs> how you think that heroin oh. get in? Right. I saw, uh, uh, yeah, that's American Gangster, didn't it? And money. They <laughs> wow. put bags of money in that motherfucker. Oh, you yeah. can't check it. No. Anything on the t- over 10 grand, the government yeah. want to know what, what yeah. it is. So, uh, how do you say that word? Uh, I, I don't, I just don't know how to say it. Mukabarat? Mukabarat? M U K Mukabarat. H A B A R A T. Mukabarat. Mukabarat. Whatever the hell Mukabarat needs to do. They are the last people you ever wanted to meet during the Saddam era. That's like Man. the chief of police. That was his Gestapo. Yep. Uh, to keep their operations strictly covert, the Mukabarat, a black 
blacked out uh, a skylight in the roof of the five-story townhouse so the U.S. Air Force and satellites couldn't peer in. They also kept a watchful eye on American spies conducting wiretap surveillance from a car across the street, the official said. That's exactly it's straight across the street from Bloomberg's place, his mansion. This is a really, really nice area. Oh, it's the nice. This oh, is the wonderful. most expensive area in New York City, 10021. And That's zip code getting, in a country, yeah. in a world. And people are getting killed in the fucking torture chamber. Right up the street from the Met. Yes. <laughs> I know. I'm happy to be 10021 adjacent. I'm 10128. I'm just yeah. happy to be adjacent. It's hard to say that 10021. I know. It's hard to say that. Get your white trash out of here. I need all my white friends to keep me over <laughs> Uh, I know I had to fill out some Lewis. forms. I had to I had to fill out some forms to bring him in. This is like the second time I've gone to bat for him in 22 years. Uh, I have to go for the white people that white people call white people to help co-sign my <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's true. He's not kidding. There's no lie. There's no lie about it. They don't wow, give a fuck. I'm just reading more. Saddam said once, if my own finger be- uh, betrayed me, then I would have it removed or cut off, the official recalled. Well, it's obviously. One. But those days are yeah. long gone. No, Saddam was executed now. in 2006, the article continues, uh, after he received a death sentence for crimes against humanity. We know that. In 2014, the hellish uh, subterranean space was converted into oh. a kitchenette during a full renovation. <laughs> I was <gonna> say, <laughs> when it cost it? approximately $120,000. <laughs> when do we get Barbara Corcoran involved, right? right. And it becomes into, it's a lovely fixer upper. It's, it's like a wonderful I think, uh, kitchenette. Right. I think your kitchen's haunted. <laughs> used to be, uh, I'd at least made it a man cave and Right. The kitchen at least, at least, sort of <laughs> yes. try to try to at least. The, the butcher of Baghdad really enjoyed this space. <laughs> that's, that's I don't true. want the fucking haunted uh, chicken pot pies coming out of him. No, but how you? I'm, I'm telling you, there's some dude if you made it that the main cave, he'd be sitting there. If that's what, he'd be leading with that. Yes. Yeah, you know, guess you can talk, you know, talk oh, to you. Oh yeah, well. I still left right. off some of the torture right. stuff <laughs> in the back. Y'all can play with. Yeah, let after let we watch sh- the game, let me show you something. <laughs> right. Go ahead and torture. I you still have the original hemostats we used to pull the shit out the fingernails off with. You get waterboard, you get your beer. Your beer come down once you that's get right. waterboard. That's right. It's tap. That's the room. That's it. And one of the oh, grand... that's what it looks like now. Oh, that's not a nice kitchen. No, that's stupid. But that's still that's in somebody's basement <laughs> in yeah. the Upper East Side. In uh, I wouldn't live in that little area right there. No, it's an okay. Oh, yeah, it's it's okay. like forty five hundred dollars. Yeah. And one month. of the grand uh, rooms, framed portraits of past Iraqi leaders probably hang on a wall, but Saddam's face is noticeably missing. We had Saddam's portrait painted on all the porcelain of each toilet. One official joked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you're joking now, you punk. So that's pretty wild. I wonder how many people died in that. Not they're enough. not saying. They're just not saying. enough if his dom got taken down. Yeah. Right. He didn't win. Not that, enough for him. That's pretty crazy. Man. I wonder if they'll let you just walk up in there if, uh, if I try to go in. Somebody own it now? Did we check it out? It's still the they same embassy. It's still embassy stuff. Is it still the embassy? Yeah. They just uh, turned that area into a kitchen. Oh, yeah, still embassy. Oh, it's just a, it's where they have cookies and milk. Now. Yeah, exactly. Tea. All those buildings the over there. Just look at that. There's a lot of embassies up there, though. Oh, it's all embassies yeah. up there. All of them. Yeah, they they can do whatever the fuck they want. Like the Israeli one, I think is on like 57. Because you see them sometimes uh, out there protesting too on 58th. Right. Oh yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and second they got one over That's there. That's how you figure protest. out where these places are. Yeah, France. Depending on the protesters outside. outside. <laughs> <laughs> The yeah. fr- France is up there too. The yeah. Kaiser, there are a bunch of them. Yeah, it's, uh, every time my friends come, I'm always walking in. They're always like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. I don't know. They're like, what's that? I'm like, some country. I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> I see them coming out of there sometimes. Yeah. Some of them African dudes, like Nigeria's up there too. Yeah, that's it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's like the Museum Mile. It's also the Diplomatic Mile. Exactly. Yeah, there. There's a lot in that area. And Woody Allen just also lingering in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Cosby got two houses up there on 82nd. Does he really? He owned two mansions on the same one block. For, one for living in and one for raping. Uh, entertainment. Just oh, well, yeah, well, yeah. yeah I, just raping I, I say entertaining, but yeah. yeah. I used to see Cosby <laughs> doing. I used to see Cosby doing his loops in Central Park. Did no you? When I was really into uh, biking the loops and stuff. He was on a bike or when running? I first uh, when I first moved to New York. So this is uh, two thousand uh, whatever two ish or whatever. I still see a lot of people in the park exactly. But he would he would jog extremely slow. I believe it. But he was still doing it back then. And he was already what in his fifties, sixties. 
two thousand sixteen years ago, two thousand two, two thousand three, fourteen years ago, somewhere in there, fourteen years ago, whatever that would be. Do the math. And no one else noticed. People just don't look around because it's New York. They just don't. Yeah, I'm like, holy fuck, that's Bill Cosby. I've seen Sandra Bullock over there. I've seen uh, what's her name all the time running. Uh, Mr. Big from the Sex and the City. Oh yeah, my dog ran up to him one day. My dog he's around a lot. When I when I was married and had Cooper the Chihuahua, Cooper ran up to Chris Noth, Liam Neeson, Bette Midler, (laughs) Katie Couric. He all all four of them. He just ran over to him because I was always walking him off their leash. Right. And then after Spitzer had to resign, the f- he, his father lives over there too. Spitzer on the east side. Within yeah. two days of the resignation, when it was still, you know, he I see a Spitzer, walking by himself with his wife. Oh, no, with his wife. The wife that stayed with him was in the park two days after they had to have that press conference. And I'm like, what the fuck? Cooper's going to go running over to him. I'm going to have Spitzer on the list now. Oh, that's and wild. I'm going to have like an awkward moment because he's just literally within 48 hours of resigning, and all of a sudden Cooper just veered off completely to the other side of the park. You could have oh. had a remote control. It was like someone had told him, you know, no, stay away from him. He needs his space. <laughs> so, and, and he'd always run up to all the celebrities and when the one time it was Spitzer, all of a sudden he just veered and went uh, 50 so yards in the other direction. So just ran up to a lot of strangers yeah. and you just remember the celebrities? I just remember, yeah, he was okay. always running up to people but right. I, they would I always be busy that. doing something. You right. know, like yeah. we, like Mr. Big was stretching against a tree, so like his back's to me and he's just right. doing, he's got headphones on and he's stretching and I see Cooper over there sniffing at his feet and he turns around because it startled him and I'm like, oh fuck, it's Chris and he's like, hey, yeah, he probably smells my dog. They would all say the same exact thing. He all, he smells, smells my, my dog. dog. That's why he's run over and yeah. said this, you know. And so the first time when it was Liam Neeson, he was patting him and rolling, having fun with him. And I'm like, he goes, what's his name? And I'm like, Cooper. And uh, I go, Cooper, this is Rob Roy McGregor. <laughs> 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 and so Liam Neeson laughed really, really hard. And because I made him laugh, I was going to say Michael Collins, but uh, he didn't see that one. And, and Liam Neeson goes, no one did. <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> no, it was always really, uh, always, uh, I had this weird ass Cooper sighting thing going on for the longest time. It was wow. really fun. But he wouldn't have anything to goddamn do with Spitzer. That was the hilarious I don't part blame of all him. Of it. That was the one he avoided. Yes. Client oh, number that, nine. Oh, that was the other thing. The Rudy Giuliani thing. Oh, pull that oh, the uh, dress? I remember that story. Yeah. That one, of my, one of my pals just sent this in uh, to me while we're doing the show. It's, uh, I don't know if I've seen this before. Rudy Giuliani and drag smooching Donald Trump, but it's just creepy because they're, yeah, let's play a little of this. It was at the Mayor's Inner Circle press roast in 2000. Before 9-11, a simpler time. You know, you're really beautiful. And a woman that looks like that has to have her own special scent. Oh, thank you. Maybe, maybe you could tell me what you think of this scent. Hmm, I like that. Sniffing, this sniffing Rudy Giuliani. Now it's on its, his boobs. <laughs> oh, you dirty boy! You, oh, oh my oh. God! <laughs> Donald, I thought you were a gentleman. That's Rudy Giuliani. <laughs> yeah. You can't say I didn't try. <laughs> Mayor Giuliani, he's given away over two billion dollars in corporate wealth. Oh, uh, that's good. That is good. Wow, that's so good. Giuliani went to my high school. Did he? Yeah, Bishop Lachlan, Catholic school, Brooklyn, private school, baby. Big you, shout to Lachlan. Are you a fan of Rudy Giuliani? No. No. No, he's just dumb. He used to dress up every year. Yes, I, he did. He had different. There's lots of pictures of him in weird ass outfits. I they mean, put I him used in to some like of him. Beauty and the Beast stuff at one but time. But he's just dumb. Mm-hmm. And then he just came out with that whole Hillary thing. Like I don't, I don't remember seeing Hillary on nine eleven. Then all the pictures came out with her right next to him. <laughs> it's like OJ. It's I like, can you I look behind you? Those shoes. <laughs> I don't, what, it's like seven hundred. Well, she has brutal Marley. Yeah, I, <laughs> I heard the story, but was she that close? Money. She's right next to That's him. Funny. <laughs> yeah, I heard it. I caught up. And then with he apologized. Lie. He came out and apologized. You have to apologize when this picture's like that. You what gotta, an idiot! You come out and, and apologize. But they'll say anything. They don't give a fuck. They'll say anything. And then you got to prove they're lying. <laughs> Find him in the Beauty and the Beast. I think they had him as uh, something from Beauty and the Beast uh, one year. In one of these rooms. Yeah, well, yeah, he used to do the various. He was. He would never hesitate to put drag on. He always yeah. do his whole both terms. He kind of enjoyed it, you know. Maybe a little too much. I love his son though, Giuliani's son. Oh, the, remember that fat, the fat kid? Oh, he just took over press conference. Letterman was always talking about him. He Andrew, is great. it Andrew Giuliani well, I mean, or something uh, like that? But the bit with Chris Farley doing it. <laughs> All right. Oh my oh, yeah. god! I forgot. Yeah. Yes. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Nigga, please. Was oh, that oh my you. god! Yes. Thank yes. you. Yes. 
Can we pull that up, please? And then that poor kid. Then the poor kid grows up, and then he, I think he was trying to become a professional golfer for a little while. Oh, was he? I don't know. I, I know, know they were strange. Days, they were stra- he he didn't talk to him for the longest time. No, yeah, that's what he did to his mother. Yeah, yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. His mother the public. kids went with the mom. Yeah. yeah, and then the kids hated Rudy. Yep. Yeah. She was the newscaster in New York. What was yeah, it? Yes, Donna something. Right. She was great. Yes, Hanover. 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 Why? Yeah, that's a good. That's a good poll. I like that poll. I'll take that one. Donna Hanover. I think that's who it was. Uh, what, you want to see the Chris Farley thing? Do I? Chris, yeah. Really? Yes. As we find that... Uh, there she is. She's great. Donna you guys Hanover. heard about uh, Kenneth Bone. They really want him to do porno. Who? The, oh, the guy the from the guy in the red sweater. Ken, Ken Bone, actually. <laughs> Ken yeah. Bone. They offer him a, a deal? Name. They want him... Into, they're offering him... I think it's up to 100000 or something like that. And people are begging him not to do porn. <laughs> Don't do it, Don't Ken do it. Bone. In that red sweater? That would be classic. Don't do it. Looking <laughs> <laughs> like... Or do. Yeah, do it. Why, Why not? not? You only live once. <laughs> YOLO, Depends baby. Depends on what his circumstances are. We're, we're getting He's close. married. He is married. We're, we're getting okay, close to then, another... Then, then, uh, no. We're getting close to another debate, right? Five or six days out. Yeah. People have rumors are that Trump might pull out of it. That's what they're trying to spread on and do the media. Why? Because of all the shit happening. So? Yeah, he'd, that's what I said. He'd rather he'd rather dig in. I think they're trying to gas it, but that's what he'd they were saying. He'd rather dig in and fight today. his way out. Yeah. What are the rules if somebody does quit? I'm sure someone could answer this for her. I don't know, I, and I've, I haven't researched it. But I guess it's just a, oh, well. <laughs> the other person, <laughs> I, well, in, I think in, it's in, just an oh, well. In, in, run. in smaller elections, yeah, you run unopposed and you, you win. Unopposed. I guess. that's how. I mean, people, oh, many, you mean quit the election? I'm or? saying, yeah, what, what would happen at this point in, oh, oh, if one I of the major parties nominees, if Hillary or for whatever reason, Does your vice president that you picked already take over? No, I don't know. I oh, have I, no idea. I thought you meant the that's debate. That's a good question. I, I, no, no, I didn't I'm, mean the debate. Oh, God. <coughs> okay, that's why I went with the dumb. What that's happens if, question. What happens? Yeah, do you get to run unopposed? You know, I know you do at various levels. Yeah, you do. Like, uh, yeah, Senate and fucking... Uh, Remember Rumsfeld ran against the dead dude and still <laughs> lost. <laughs> no, that was uh, who was that it? Was, uh, 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 Missouri? And yes. he, he was he was uh, uh, under uh, who, uh, John. Uh, oh, uh, it was uh, yeah. Mel Carnahan was the governor that died in the right. plane crash, right? And uh, and his widow ran right later, and he couldn't beat. Uh, uh, oh, he sang all the time. Yes. He was always singing. He sang <laughs> at press conferences at the White House. He's always, you know, come on. I, 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 uh, uh, yeah, it wasn't Rumsfeld. It was the other dude. Uh, br- uh, did it start with a B? Yeah. yeah. Oh God, damn it. Yeah. Oh, uh, so, not Brown. No, 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 no. Oh, it's, not, um, maybe it's, it's not even John. Maybe it's a, but it, he beat Mel Carnahan died in the prank crash of Governor Missouri. I'm, I'm and he out, got to be I'm he got to be one. Secretary of State. Yes, he was, after he, that, after, after he lost to the dead dude. Yes, he was right. He Bush. Right. Bush gave him a job. Bush gave him Secretary of State. Yeah, because he couldn't get elected. He couldn't beat the dead dude in election. <laughs> <laughs> so he no, got an appointment. In a, I was in I was working the funny bone in St. Louis a week after that happened. <laughs> so and I was saying it was just a joy to go on stage every night and going, okay, you lose to a dead good and then still end up being Secretary of State. Yeah, that's hookups. You know, that's yeah. hook, tell me you don't fucking... Hookups in Washington. Brick, brick. God, here you go. Rule yeah, nine of the Republican National Committee Republican. rules governs filling vacancies in nominations and stipulates that should the party's presidential or vice presidential candidate leave the ticket for whatever reason, the hole may be filled either by a reconvening of the national convention or by the party committee itself. The vice presidential nominee is not given any preferential consideration. Oh. So I, okay. I, so if Trump just says, fuck y'all. Then Pence just can't move in. No, he can't just move up. Because you know why they got that rule in there? Because people will be doing that like fucking the dirty way. Yeah. Like, hey, you get in, and then you drop out, and then I'm right. in. Yeah, I know the public doesn't like you, but I'll bring you in as my running mate, then I'll fucking drop out, then they're stuck with you. Right. I, I don't like the fact that we don't vote for the vice president. Well, you kind of do, if you buy because you're voting for the ticket, not just the president. I get, yeah, I guess. Because you can't vote for a president and then pick the other guy for vice president. I understand that, but, I mean, don't you think, like, the guy with the second most votes or something should be the vice president? No, because nothing they always, will get done. But they always pick a guy yeah, that yeah. could deliver a state, and he, he's not a full candidate in a lot of cases. Who, the vice president? Yeah, he can yeah. just deliver, like, Florida or Yeah, Virginia vice president position used to be a place where you die, where, the, where your political uh, career went to the die. That's yeah. why FDR didn't want the shit. I mean, Teddy Roosevelt didn't right. want the shit, but he got in, then once his name got shot, and then he moved into the presidency. And then all of a sudden you got this guy as your president, and, and you know, the people technically didn't even vote for him. Yeah. It's a little weird. It is weird. I think it was I attorney general, it wasn't secretary of state. No attorney more. general, yeah. Attorney general. Name? I'm going to look it up, but it was attorney general. Sam Croft. Something Croft. Something Croft. 
Maybe. Brand Croft. Br- no, no, no. Ashcroft. John Ashcroft. John Ashcroft. Wow. John Ashcroft. Wow. Wow. Yes. <laughs> I could have kind of got that one. Yes. <laughs> the B was on me. Ah, I was like, Ashcroft. I said, Ashcroft. I said, I said John. Croft. Yeah. It's John Ashcroft when he you became a journalist. You turned me off with the B. I did. Right. He used to sing. Remember he saw Wasn't there a Brown just, that, that, yeah. that uh, died in a plane crash? Back oh, in the yeah, day? that was Brown who died in a plane crash. That, who was, that was That's a, what threw me off when you said Yeah, Fred B. Brown, right? Then it went Brown and then yeah. uh, right, that was, Ashcroft. He got murdered, by the way. Let's not pretend like he wasn't murdered. Somebody got murdered. Government planes don't fly into fucking mountainsides for no reason. But Ashcroft would always go. He would go on the Mike Huckabee show on the Fox Network, and they would sing shitty yes. songs together. Mike Huckabee's always playing the yes. guitar. Yes, Huckabee gave me a, a, a tie with a guitar. I did a show a couple of times. <laughs> Huckabee's a nice guy. I wouldn't vote for him, but he's a nice guy. Weirdo. The Huckster. What a weird fat stuff. I love weird, him. Yeah. Good old Huckabee. But he lost all the weight, and then he's slowly putting it all back yeah, on. Yeah, he's big again. But yeah, he lost like a couple hundred pounds. He was massive. Easily, two, I think two hundred. Really yeah, oh, he was massive, yeah. huge. And then yeah. went on, he did the Luther, Vandross. Hmm. He went. Yeah. He, he yo-yoed the whole time. We got time for one more. That's dangerous. You either one man hides dead grandma in garbage bags <laughs> so he could still live in her home. Oh, I saw that. Those I stories that happen from time to time. Hey, rent's high, motherfucker. Because <laughs> what city? Because he's still, New York. He's, oh, okay. he's still trying to collect her uh, her check, probably right. right. Is Maybe that, or he just don't want to change the lease on the house because if sometimes if it's, if it's her apartment and he dies, she dies and she's got the lease, he's got to get the fuck uh, out. Now you're gonna make me look up the fucking story, Paul. Do you know the story? I, I know. The, I think it was the son, the nephew. I mean, it was the grandson, and then they had to. They found out the mother was dead. The grandmother was dead because other family members from outside the state called in. It was like we don't see her and. What's going on? We can't contact her. And then they found out that he had her in bags in a room. It's a good move, though. DJ in a party. It was like, this house party four. That's the name of it. <laughs> <laughs> the grandson surrounded the woman's body with air fresheners. Oh, wow. All right. We got to read some of this. Okay. Oh, Queens, fuck. first of all. Queens. There you go. That sums it up. How bad do you want that nice cable package? <laughs> <laughs> Man hides uh, dead grandma in garbage bag so he could still live in her home. The grandson surrounded the woman's body with air fresheners, spray the area with Febreze, and added more layers of garbage bags, 16 in all. As the stench got worse, police sources said. He also covered her in paint to help uh, tamp down the smell. <laughs> oh, God. I never, cry wanna, on. I never want to read tamp down the smell ever again. <laughs> Tamping it down. <laughs> Uh, authorities charge the grandson with improper body disposal and failure to report a death. Each a misdemeanor, punishable by a $10,000 fine or a year in jail. They're not going to fine him. Nah. He's not going to jail. Recounting the events of the day before his grandmother died, he told police he rolled her onto her stomach to relieve her bed sores and left the room. Cops are investigating whether they may have killed her. Uh, oh, they think when he rolled her over, he, that could have, like, and then he left the room, that could have suffocated her. Ugh. That's not good. But she's had bed sores. It's like she should have been up and out of that bed every day. Right. He didn't want to lose the apartment, though. That's what he's sticking with. And as a New Yorker, that's a legitimate reason. That makes, yeah. that makes a lot of sense I don't understand why he was going to lose the apartment, because he couldn't afford the bills, and, and he was living off her check, or what? It could just be a lease situation. I don't really see that in here. Uh, a lawyer for one of the dead woman's daughters asked cops to perform a wellness check at the home. Right. That's how they found out. Uh, I just don't know why he was going to lose the place. I don't really see it in the story, that part of it. I've heard over the years that, you know, they're still trying to collect the the old bags check. Oh, yeah. People try to do that, too. Try to get the Social Security check to come through. Right. But, yeah, leases in New York, too. If you're not the person on a lease, if the person dies, you get, they give you sometimes they give you 30 days or 15 days to get the fuck out of Dodge. He was just fear, fearful he was going to become homeless. So he, he was scared. He was a little nuts. It wasn't like a rent stabilized place or anything of like that, right? right? Well, his last name was Fuhrer. Fuhrer, so it's, right? It's like mine, Fuhrer. <laughs> <laughs> but you must really want free rent if you're going to live in there with a dead person. Oh my god! That's yeah. what he said. How bad girls like this? You in here cooking? What you cooking, ass? <laughs> Wait, you like, cooking nah, some of that Indian food? <laughs> <laughs> One of the bartenders at Caroline's. Yeah. One of the bartenders. <laughs> I like that one. I like that you like it that one. It came out of nowhere. If uh, stuck up I, on I, it. I, well, I like that you like that one. <laughs> one of the old bartenders at Caroline's told me years ago that he had a battling couple next door to him that was just, I mean, they were always thinking that they were going to have to call 911 because the husband. 
husband was going to kill the woman. It really? Was just crazy, beating the shit out of each other, insane. And then they got quiet over a few days, and then it started smelling really awful. And him and his roommate are going, he's finally done it. He's fucking killed her. You know, we're going to have to call the cops. And they waited, and they called the cops, and it was uh, it was rotten Chinese food. Ah, really? <laughs> in their own apartment. In their own apartment. Yeah, oh, in their own oh apartment. God. It wasn't even in. Oh, it's embarrassing. <laughs> and the, and the, oh. So, what the fuck? The, That's embarrassing. Uh, the cops, you know, they're in the hallway with the cops. They're like, you know, and the cop knocks on the door, and the fucker, the guy opens the door, and they're like, oh, shit, it's not. <laughs> everything's yeah. fine. The guy was there. The wife was there. Everything what was fine. What food do you think it was? And it was, it was nasty-ass Chinese food in, in their, their own apartment. apartment. It's like, yeah, nobody's dead in 3E. What, what Chinese, Clean your fucking place. What Chinese food you know, would fucking smell that bad yeah, if you are laying around? General not-sos. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> trying to think which one would get you. <laughs> so, it can be correct. Korean too. Was it Korean t- food? It, I just, he was so, they said he'd never, stupidest wow. fucking thing he'd ever wow. done in his life. They were convinced. That's and his roommate were convinced that the guy had murdered her and they were smelling the rotting corpse. Mm, we're not going to get to the uh, student got vibrator stuck up her backside during sex with boyfriend. I'll tell you the Lou Black. I can tell you the Lou Black. Uh, yeah, yeah, because we're, we're running out of it's, show. It's, it's not too, uh, Matt, Kathleen Madigan was living in LA and Lou was out there working some gigs. Right. And her nephews and nieces had been to visit her a couple of weeks before and they'd been to the beach and taken sand dollars out of the ocean, okay. you know, and yeah. you can put bleach on them, yeah. and it takes the, you know, and then they, they look like how you see them in the gift shop, right. right? So Madigan had showed her nieces and nephew this trick. They had a bunch of sand dollars on some paper plates, and uh, she put them on top of the refrigerator in her apartment, you know, to let them settle with the bleach and everything. Well, then the kids left town. She forgot about it. Lou comes to town. <laughs> He's crashing at her apartment and gets up in the middle of the night. No. And goes, yes, and goes looking for a snack and thinks, no. she, and thinks she's made cookies. <laughs> Oh, come on. What a fat boy thinking. So, the next morning, <laughs> she comes out of her bedroom the next morning. He was sleeping in the guest room, and he's sitting there having coffee, and he's like, Kathleen, I got to tell you, these fucking cookies are horrible. <laughs> She's like, you fucking idiot. You're eating sand dollars. Oh, my. <laughs> and almost broke, he almost cracked a crown on one. Did he not? <laughs> can't eat sand. Eating a seashell, That's a basically. true fat boy in the middle of the night. <laughs> nice. A, like, who would put cookies up here? <laughs> All angry at her. <laughs> Uh, ooh, blood, 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 teeth. <laughs> no, no. Are we running out of show? Proud oh, moments. We're right. on a tight schedule with this whole new thing. That's he the music. Them? Meaning we got to yeah. get out of here. So I ate one, I ate half one. Vic Kelly, God damn it, it's good to see you, bro. Yes. Great to be here, buddy. Really, really yeah. good to see you. Uh, Vic has got a couple things going on. I'm at the Hard Rock Casino in Sioux City, Iowa on November 9th, and then the Funny Bone in Omaha the rest of the week after that. FunnyBoneOmaha.com. I wanted to ask you about the rest of your summer and all that. Cause I you, was gone for a month. I know. You took off. Oh, Next yeah. time you come in, we got to go down that road a little bit. Sherrod Small. Yes, sir. What yeah. You? Get ready for that uh, ESPN show probably in a week or so. And you're hosting uh, Village yeah, Underground. That's right. The Village Underground thing on uh, the election day. That's going to be fun. Nice. Election day. we got everybody coming through there. Yeah, that's going to be fun. All right. And uh, I guess we did it. Fuck it. I'm on Twitter. OP Radio. See you tomorrow. Bye.